Hey, The Gracious Gang. It's Mike Creedy from TheGraciousGuest.org here. The Gracious Guest Show on YouTube, and that's where you're at right now. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do that. And uh, please share this far and wide, especially uh, today, if you're watching it the day I'm releasing it, is uh, Memorial Day. And uh, this is just a, a very special time uh, for uh, all of us, I think, and, and myself and, and uh, fellow veterans to be able to reflect. And, and we do this each year. And this is something I thought I'd share with all of you here just a few minutes, namely how my faith was affected by my Iraq deployment. Um, so just a little bit of background here. I'm going to put some kind of a couple pictures up throughout this, just a couple you can kind of see. But I was uh, I was commissioned in 2006 from uh, after a couple years of ROTC when I was at Catholic U for my undergrad in Washington, D.C. I also did uh, four years of Army ROTC in the Georgetown Hoya Battalion, so Georgetown's Army ROTC program. And uh, wonderful experiences there, a lot of uh, just great friends that I made through that uh, experience. And it was a time where, you know, we were the class in between um, the fall of the towers in 2001 with the September 11th attacks uh, and the initiation of the Iraq conflict. You know, so we, we basically started off our freshman year of college kind of in that little window. And so... Uh, it was during our freshman year that the uh, invasion of Iraq began. And so we, we knew that it was very likely that we were going to be in some sort of conflict, right? That we were either going to be uh, in Afghanistan, or Iraq, or somewhere else. There were so many questions. I remember it being a, a time of, of tremendous, you know, confusion and just, you know, you, you feel this impulse where you want to serve your nation and there's all this, this you know, these question marks. Where's this headed? You know, what's, what's, what's going to happen? And... Uh, uh, and for me, you know, it really started generating some some deeper questions within me about my own faith, my own perspective on on conflict, on war, on what is the <laughs> what's what's the meaning of justice, what's the meaning of life, what's I mean, all kinds of stuff. Right? You know, it was a very pivotal time of my life. And so, to make a long story short, just to jump ahead a little bit, when I uh, ended up deploying myself, which was in two thousand eight. I was deployed with the Psychological Task Force in Iraq, um, Psychological Operations Task Force 11, and we deployed to uh, Baghdad. And we had units all throughout the, the country, and uh, I mostly spent my time in Baghdad. I had a little bit of time down in Basra in the south. And uh, through that whole experience, you know, I, a couple of things I was thinking about uh, in terms of reflecting on my faith, and the first one was to it really challenged me uh, uh, to not take the sacraments for granted. And it's often the case that uh, those who are in most need of the sacraments in a theater of combat are frequently the ones who have the least amount of access to the sacraments, especially the sacrament of reconciliation uh, and the Eucharist. Now, I was very blessed that being where I was at, uh, we had relatively regular access uh, to the sacraments because we were in a fairly def uh, defended area. Uh, but that being said, you know, I, I, I've, I've literally been through the experience on a number of occasions where I'm in the middle of, like, praying in anticipation of receiving the Eucharist and an alarm goes off because we're being rocketed, you know, and then you have to hunker down and basically lay low and hide and kind of get all your, um, uh, you know, protective gear on or, or get in some sort of shelter. So that's a different experience. Um, and... And again, not to uh, compare myself to some kind of martyr, but I honestly, just personally, when I hear stories of our brothers and sisters throughout the world, especially in somewhere like Nigeria right now, where they don't even know if they can go to Christmas Mass or Easter Mass without being directly attacked um, and possibly killed. I, I mean, that's something that, that really goes to the, the depths of my heart and my soul, and I try to keep that in my prayers. Um, Another thing that was very important for me was the recognition of being in truly biblical territory, right? Being right in that that um, heartland, basically, of where Abraham came from, right? The Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers is what that means. The rivers being the Euphrates and the Tigris. And that area, I mean, it touches the lives of so many in the Bible. Like I said, Abraham coming from there originally, Daniel being sent to Babylon, Daniel... Um, the prophet, you know, who spent uh, the rest of his life basically uh, per performing God's uh, will or, or, or obeying God's will in the context of serving this king who had conquered his city and the challenges that brought with it, uh, being the prophet who delivered the message about this messianic meaning behind King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. 
uh, Queen Esther, not too far to the east of, of where I was. Uh, Modern-day Iran is where she lived. Um, the story of Tobit, of course, in the Old Testament, you know, where they're by the river. I forget if it's Euphrates or Tigris off the top of my head, but the, the fish that, you know, basically latches onto his leg. And I remember thinking, oh, that's probably just some figurative thing. I'm not so sure anymore because some of our guys went fishing, you know, in the Tigris and they caught a fish that was like five and a half feet long. The thing was ridiculously huge. Uh, so, uh, Nehemiah, um, Ezra, you know, think of like Northern Iraq with the story of, um, uh, well, specifically with the story of, I'm thinking actually of, of, of the conquest of, uh, Nineveh, I'm sorry, Jonah, let me back up Jonah and the whale, the whole story of the, the conversion of Nineveh. So that ancient biblical city of Nineveh, Northern Iraq, and then with Nehemiah, uh, and the, um, the the Persian sort of experience, right, where the, the Persians now control uh, modern-day Iraq as part of their empire, and eventually uh, the king allows uh, Nehemiah to go back in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And uh, so there's all these episodes throughout the Old Testament, especially, that somehow take place in or cross through this territory that I was in, and that was a really powerful experience as well. Uh, I also found myself very frequently having an odd shift where my shift was like 3 or 4 a.m. to 3 or 4 p.m., which was strange. We had this this bizarre mid-shift. And um, it so happened that shortly after, I would be uh, kind of getting the day started in our, our uh, sort of little office there, basically. Um, and we did a lot with, with transportation of uh, different dignitaries and, and uh, all kinds of different coordination with our uh, subordinate units throughout the country. And I, I my shift started off with... Just me and like one other person was pretty, pretty, um, uh, pretty lightly staffed at the beginning of the day, and I would step out for a break, usually uh, corresponding with the pre-dawn prayer time. Um, that basically the call to prayer would go out over Baghdad, and you know, I'm not Muslim. I have uh, profound differences uh, of of belief about uh, you know certain key theological tenets, let's say, but I was really overwhelmed by this powerful experience of sometimes stepping out and doing the Liturgy of the Hours at that same time, or the Rosary, you know, and praying for the people, basically, you know, challenging myself to pray for people who are different than me, people who believe differently than I do, people who uh, I believe are children of God and who I wanted to come into a full relationship with Him, uh, and to do that in kind of a discreet way, but a direct way, you know, here I am with you, sort of, you know, was, was kind of an idea, which was just a really interesting, sometimes kind of haunting experience, right, before the dawn, and I'm out there by myself, it's hot and, and dusty, and that was a neat experience. Um, speaking of prayer, and I kind of hinted at this earlier, praying during rocket attacks, you know, uh, I had never before that had the experience, and I don't think I've had it since, no, come to think of it, of praying in the midst of a moment that could be my last in a very tangible way. Uh, and how important that is to face your own mortality. And uh, we are so tempted in, in our, our day and age and our society to kind of neglect that or to sort of push it off and, and uh, trick ourselves basically into thinking that that moment's never going to come for us. And it is. It is going to come for all of us at some point. Whether you're a 25-year-old soldier in a, in a conflict uh, or a 125-year-old, very, very uh, record-setting old man in your bed or old woman in your bed, um, it's going to come. You know, we're only here once. Uh, and as, as scripture says, right, it's we're only we're here once, I'm paraphrasing, uh, and then the judgment, you know, that there's no, um, there's no second tries, that this life is ultimately about opening ourselves increasingly to the divine light, to Christ, to his presence, to the way, the truth, and the life being in us, so that when we die, he rises out of our own death, essentially, raising us with him. Um, that's the, some imagery I think is important for us to keep in mind. And along with that, speaking of Jesus, praying for those uh, who are our enemies. And for me, it was a real tangible way of finding myself, uh, and I'm not bragging, it was all grace, because I was surprised, <laughs> I was completely surprised to find myself doing this, quite frankly. And I remembered vividly the very first time, and, and, you know, the rockets are landing close enough. You know, they ended up being, uh, you know, just outside 100 yards away from me. That's that's close enough. Uh, that one night in particular, I remember. And it was it was loud, and it's scary. You don't know if the next one's going to hit you, you know. Because uh, these guys would basically set these rockets up to fire, and they'd, they'd scurry off real quick before certain, you know, um, countermeasures or certain... 
you know, patrols or something would find them doing this, right? So it wasn't uh, often a, a very tremendously precisely orchestrated attack. It's they would set these things up, aim them, you know, they do their best to aim them at targets of interest, and, and I'm right in the range there. One of them uh, hit our dining hall, like, one time, or close to it, right after I had left, you know, not long after. So uh, it, was a, it was a daily threat and a very unpredictable one. And I remember laying there, and um, I found myself praying for whoever had launched these rockets. And, and my prayer was, it wasn't to be noble or like, oh, look at how holy I am. It was truly, genuinely, out of a sense of, of just the radical awareness of, like, this, whoever set that up, like, they're a human being. They were a baby one time, you know, who people like tickled their, their feet and, you know, pinched their cheeks. And they grew up in an environment and surrounded by influences that pressured them. And then they gave their own will over, right? Because we do, I'm not, we can't blame all external, you know, um, uh, indi- or, uh, uh, indicators, external um, influences. We are responsible for our own choices. Uh, but one way or the other, this person has grown uh, into this, down, they've gone down this path, they've grown into this person who's seeking my blood, and they have no idea who I am. They don't know me. They don't, you know, have a personal reason to hate me. And, and the overwhelming heartbreak and stupidity and foolishness and folly of war, period, really just sank in, you know. Um, and I, I believe, you know, in the, the church's teaching on just war doctrine, you know, in principle, I, I don't want to get into specifics about my experiences. Um, but my point is, it doesn't matter what the consequences are, uh, circumstances, I should say. It doesn't matter what the hoped for consequences are, okay? Um, Christ tells us, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, right? Uh, various other places he says, right? With the measure that you judge, you will be judged. Um, and so I sincerely prayed. For, I prayed for the conversion of heart. I prayed for the uh, for an awakening of Christ's presence in the people doing this. I prayed that I would not be drawn to hatred uh, myself. And um, it was ultimately, I think, um, what led to a fuller sense of gratitude when I was able to come home. Something I try to remember, and I don't. I, I, I'm very imperfect with it. But it's moments like this. It's days like today, again, Memorial Day that I'm releasing this. Or whenever you're watching this, it's never a bad idea uh, to reflect, you know, to uh, look back on these opportunities that the Lord has given you to press pause and to try to avoid those temptations to seek vengeance or to, to group you know, uh, people into a conveniently dismissible little, you know, band to recognize that every single human being is a child of God. Uh, And that's a hard sell sometimes, you know, and it can get personal when you have friends, you have uh, colleagues, people who didn't get to come home. Uh, And so today I, I remember those who didn't get to come home in a special way. I thank God for their lives. I pray for repose of their souls I thank God that for whatever reason in his divine will, um, I I got to come home. And as long as I'm still breathing, there's something for me to do for his glory today. Um, And so I just wanted to share with you a little bit some of these memories, just some of these uh, ways that my own faith uh, by the Lord's grace was deepened through that experience uh, and how I try not to let go of it and try not to forget it, try to remember it regularly enough that those those, uh, lessons stay very alive and, uh, and, and form the way I do whatever I do, and especially things like this, sharing with all of you. So thank you guys so much for stopping by today just for a little reflection on this. Uh, have a wonderful, blessed Memorial Day if you're watching this on Memorial Day uh, or whenever you're watching it. God's blessings to you. Stick around in the future. Uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel and share this far and wide. And until next time, don't forget to wonder. God bless you.